the philosophy was to build a club that could be self-sufficient and that wouldn't need regular injections of capital um, for, its, um, for its running costs. And at the time, we felt that, th that putting in a 3G pitch would give us a chance to do that. And there were very, other, very few other uh, opportunities to make it self-sufficient. In other words, we gambled that the 3G pitch would bring enough revenue, enough interest and, and develop all the community side and boost attendances and sales that it would all work. It wasn't a risk because we were choosing one possible model against another one. It was that or nothing. It was clear that there was no alternative because the club was in debt um, and it had to be a business model that we felt would, would actually not just um, break even day to day but be capable of delivering a sort of a, a value and, and, and ultimately that the club would be worth more than we put into it. And we took a gamble with, with Terry Casey that that, would be, um, that that would be successful. But we also took the gamble that we would be able to get 3G into the conference at the time and that was a big gamble because Bill Williams was the guru of football involved in the clubs and he said quite definitely there's no way the conference will allow 3G. So we took the gamble that we would be able to persuade the conference and, and, and make contribute to a huge movement in England um, in favour of, of synthetic pitches. We had quite a bit of correspondence with the um, conference at the time in 2013 um, and they basically told us to get lost. They were completely against um, allowing 3G pitches. Eventually we did a presentation to the board. One of the, the board members said oh, we, we'd be concerned if we, let, if we let it in at Conference South that will open the floodgates and there'll be problems at the top of the National League because there'll be no admission to the Football League, which is what's happening now. I said, well, look, like, let me reassure you, if you allow it in the Conference South, um, it's going to be a few years before anyone's knocking on the door of the Football League. To which one of the, the, the board members turned around and said, no, you're wrong. The reason we're not, we, we don't want to allow 3G in the conference is because so many of our clubs want to put it in. We kind of thought, well, if we're up against this sort of stuff, we've got no chance. But then we threatened them. Um, we went to see a leading sports barrister and we effectively made a a threat that if they didn't move on allowing it, we would consider using a legal path to get what was right. At the same time, the Football Association were moving uh, on the whole issue. And the Football Association, which is in many ways powerless in, in the top echelons of football, do have sway over the National League. And they made the decision to allow it in the FA Cup all the way up to semi-finals. And subsequently, the conference took a view, you know, changed their mind and they did allow it. but only with this rule that they have whereby if a, if a club is in danger of getting promoted it has to change its, its pitch. Part of the agreement being allowed to install the 3G pitch was a uh, sign of a document which said that if we were to gain promotion to the Football League we'd rip up the 3G pitch and reinstall the grass pitch, which is no, which is a bit of a tall order in itself, depending on when you get promoted. If you get automatic, fantastic. If you go up via the playoffs, that's going to run, run in quite deep into May. Um, and then if you have pre-season in July, it's really only a sort of 10-week window, so I think we've re reluctantly had to sign it. We had no choice. And I think what's disappointing is that the National League are um, promoting it and they say that you know they're, they're for it, etc. At the same time, if we don't rip up the 3G pitch on gaining promotion, or should we have been in that position, um, then at the current rule state that we get relegated twice. Well, I've said previously on many occasions that I think the rule is vindictive and unfair and unworkable and that it, it could 
potentially bring the game into disrepute because it's such a punishing rule beyond the call of duty that it could lead a club to want to alter the way its matches go because it doesn't want to get in a position where it could be promoted. We have probably up, upwards of 40 teams from under sixes all the way through to our academy. Uh, we have a ladies team, we have soccer schools, um, we have local schools. In terms of diversity, I would say it's 50% used for our community teams who hire it for us, a, a slightly lower percentage than we do for the general public as a thing to, to create a better community spirit around the club. Um, so they pay a little bit less, but they do take up the bulk of the training slots in the evening. And then three evenings a week, six aside tournaments are held here. Uh, today, for example, we had soccer school, so 120 kids here. Um, and they do three days a week. So pitch art is brilliant, so people pay for the pitch, great, that's an income. But it's not that, your, your bar's open, your facilities are open. The, the kids that get to play here on a Saturday morning, soccer school, get a ticket to the league game afterwards on the Saturday. So you're also generating that sort of the next set of fans. Uh, in terms of gross profit, it's probably, say we, turn, wait, say we make a profit about a quarter million pound a year, so £100,000 of that would be from the 3G pitch. But then you know, that doesn't attribute the monies that the pitch generates elsewhere in terms of people knowing about the club, coming for other functions and events and bring their families along having been in for say a soccer school or evening training. And when we installed it, it was purely that. It met, it met everything we wanted in terms of our community, getting people to come here, creating a community hub. The general ballpark figure, if you lose a game for a Saturday and replay it on a Tuesday is 50%, you will halve your revenue. And that is including reprinted tickets, programs, um, you've already, if it's a last minute postponement, you've already paid the staff, you've had the grounds set up, you've paid the groundsman. So we've had one postponement here in, in five and a half years uh, due to extreme weather. Um, so it, it doesn't impact us and, and that's an absolute benefit at this level. We had to get the fans down for a general meeting to explain. We had a home game for, I think it must have been about seven weeks. I think it was in the November, December periods. First it was rain, then it was snow. Um, and you can't, I think cash flow in a football club and any business is difficult enough. But when you uh, find out that your biggest source of income for the four week period of which you're trying to prepare for uh, might not come in, might not happen, might not be on, um, it's almost impossible to try and run the club correctly, finance it correctly, remain sustainable without digging, digging yourself a hole or finding yourself in debt. You know, everything's here on one site as well, so you, everything's stored here. You don't have to go running around trying to find other pitches and, and shifting your equipment around, so it's, it keeps the cost down to an absolute minimum. There isn't a um, sugar daddy who is chucking in three million pound a year and here we go, let's go and get promoted. Everything we try to do has been sustainable, whether it's a function suites, whether it's a pitch hire. I just see the struggles that even we have with cash flow, even having a 3G pitch. I don't know how other teams survive without having someone dipping their hand in their pocket every week. So it, it makes our lives so much easier and you can, you can guarantee a set of income that you, that's there. That's, that's the benefit for us. And it means that we're not stressed throughout the season. You know, there's a lot of clubs that won't pay their players in January, February. Postponements, the money's not in, there's no money to pay anyone. We've never been in that position. The only financial model at the moment in the Football League seems to be TV money goes up every year. I don't think it's a very safe or it's a very commercially viable um, proposition that, that is the, that's the safety net, the TV money every year. I just can't understand as to why it shouldn't be in the Football League. Forget, oh, it's not, it's not right, it's not pure, it's not how it is. But no one's given, given me an actual answer as to what is the factual reason that 3G pitches shouldn't be allowed in the EFL.
I think the better 3G services are better for you and they're probably better for the quality of the game. Um, we played at Bromley a few weeks ago and they didn't have the shock absorber underneath it that, that Maidstone have. Um, and I think that probably made a bit of a difference. I did feel it a little bit more the next day. Um, but in terms of quality of game, I think it can only improve with a, with a top class 3G facility. There's no test, no test for grass pitch whatsoever. So the start of this year, we have to go and pay a company three grand to come in and test it, bounce a ball, ev ev every single sort of test you can imagine. Um, and we have to pay three grand for that privilege. I think as soon as you let the surface get into your head, um, that can be an advantage obviously for the home team. But as soon as players get, get it in the head that the surface is going to cause them a problem, they probably tend to find niggles mentally. Um, but when you ask people for data and you ask people for, OK, can you prove it? I think it's very, um, it's very loose. Uh, I suffer like every other player with stiff back and you know you get little injuries but in terms of my joints I, I'm, I'm fine um, and I can speak to be fair for most of the other boys when it, it, it's not really any dissimilar to, to what you get on a hard grass surface or a really really soft grass surface because you play on a really soft grass surface you, your glutes tend to go or you know so at least with a 3G pitch you, you sort of know what you're getting um, and again you, you adjust accordingly. Most of us are football purists and we all want to see football played on grass and that's how we've seen it growing up and we, that's the way it should be. And In an ideal world, you, I don't think anyone will ever say that a, a 3G pitch is better than a grass pitch. If you can play on Wembley every week and be as lucky as Tottenham can, then you, you would say, yeah, we, we would, but that's an ideal world. And I think as soon as you come out of the Premier League and the top half of the Championship, the realistic world is that 3G pitches are a sustainable way of you know building a football club and again for as a player I know that I much prefer knowing in my head that I'm coming to play on a surface like we've got because I know I know what it's going to be rather than going on to a grass pitch after the rain or after a lot of sunshine. Figures with 3G here it's funny after five and a half years people ask you questions about it I've forgotten that we've got it you know I always thought you, you don't notice it it's just another playing surface.